Here's a solid mechanics question that first year engineering students might see in their uh, studies, whether they're doing aerospace, mechanical or civil engineering. And if you'd like to see anything similar to this in the future, or if you have any suggestions for any topics or specific problems that you'd like to see, let me know in the comments. So in this question, we have to draw the shear force and bending moment diagrams for this beam. Now, as with any similar problem, the first thing that I recommend doing is finding the reaction forces. Now, in this case, we're just going to find one reaction force, which is the reaction force at A, or RA, as I'll draw it here. And you'll see why uh, that's the case. So we have a reaction force here. We have another reaction force here. And then we have a distributed load which is acting from the halfway point all the way until the right-hand side of the beam. Okay, and we know some lengths, sort of. We don't know the numbers, but we know this is uh, half the length of the beam, and the length of the beam is capital L. So finding the reaction forces in the easy way would be by applying moments, uh, let's say about point C here. Okay, so if we take moments about point C, where counterclockwise is positive, then this is what we get. We have RA, which is producing a clockwise moment. So we have minus RA times L. And then we have a counterclockwise moment due to the distributed load. So that's gonna be plus WL, which is the total force due to the distributed load. And the point at which the distributed load is acting is halfway along its span, basically. So in this case, the moment arm with respect to point C is this, which is L over four. Okay, so we have L over four and uh, this could have been L over two actually. So yeah, we have W L over two as the force and L over 4 as the moment arm. So we can cancel out an L at this point, which will give us that RA is going to equal 1 over 8 WL. Right, so this is the reaction force at A, and we don't actually have to bother with the reaction force at C, as you'll see in a bit. So to find the shear force and the bending moment diagrams, uh, I would first consider an arbitrary distance x from point A, um, and that distance, I'm going to constrain it to be less than half of the beam. So I'm going to consider the shear force and the bending moment within the first half of the beam, that is, until the distributed load starts acting. Okay. So this is our free body, this is our new free body diagram. We have this part of the beam, and then we have the reaction at A, which is acting up. And then we have the shear force here, and of course the bending moment, like this. And there are no other forces, right? Because we haven't reached the halfway point yet. So let's then find what the force, what the uh, shear force and the bending moment are. Now we know this distance is x. So we have Ra minus s is equal to zero, which means that the shear force is equal to Ra, which is equal to one over eight W L, right? So the shear force is one over eight W L and it's acting downwards. Okay. The fact that we got a plus here means that our assumption that the shear force is downwards was actually correct. Okay. So let's now find the bending moment. So for the bending moment, we use the fact that the sum of moments about a point P uh, has to be equal to zero. And we're going to choose our point P uh, here. Okay. So we have M, that's the unknown bending moment, and then we have minus, uh, which because this produces a clockwise moment, 
uh, actually, we're looking here. This produces a clockwise moment of 0.3. So we have minus Ra times x equals 0. Okay, so m is equal to Rax, which is equal to 1 over 8 WLx. So the moment depends on x to the power 1, right? In other words, this moment so far is a linear function of x and if we draw this on on a graph so let's first look at the shear force we have x and we have s for the shear force and what we have is that the shear force is 1 over 8 w l right so we have 1 over 8 w l and this is l over 2 and this is l and this is how the shear force looks like. Okay, so it starts at um, it starts at x equals zero, and it ends at x equals l over two. And we don't really know what happens beyond that. Uh, we have to analyze that separately. And in terms of the bending moment, we have x and we have n here. So we will draw a line to separate those two. So the bending moment is is a linear function, it has a positive gradient, and when x is zero, the bending moment is zero, and when x is L over two, the bending moment is one over eight WL times L over two, which is one over 16 WL squared, okay? So it starts at zero and it ends up at that value that we, uh, wrote on the previous page. So this is how the graph looks like, right? We have 1 over 16 uh, WL squared. Okay, so we found um, the first halves of the shear force and the bending moment diagram. So let's move on and let's try to find uh, the other part. Now, in this uh, second phase, we're going to uh, take x as the distance from A to a point which is to the right of B. Okay, so now we're going to consider the second half of the beam where the distributed load is acting. And let's draw the free body diagram for that and let's see what we get. So this is the, uh, this is the beam, this is our A acting here. This. The halfway point is where the distributed load starts acting, and the the length that we're considering is x. So this is uh, x, and of course from here to here you've got l over two. Okay, and what we're trying to find is this shear force and this bending moment. And let's draw W as a distributed load as well. So uh, in terms of the shear force, we can apply sum of vertical forces has to be zero. So we have RA, we have minus W times. Now, in this case, W is acting from L over 2 to X. So the distance is going to be X minus L over 2 and then minus s equals zero. So we can move things around and get s as Ra minus Wx minus L over two. Okay. So the shear force is Ra minus, uh, I'll just rewrite that again. And we know what Ra is, that's one over eight WL, and we can expand this a bit and we'll get plus one half WL minus WX. So the shear force is 5 over 8 WL minus WX. So in this case, it looks like the um, shear force is no longer a constant, right? It does depend on X and it seems like it only depends on X to the power of 1, which means that the shear force is a linear function of uh, x okay so let's try to see how that looks like on our uh, on our diagram 
So the first thing that I'll do is I'll try to find what is S when X is equal to L over 2. So that is 5 over 8 WL minus W times L over 2. And this is just going to be equal to 1 over 8 WL. Okay. So for the second half of the beam, uh, there are no jumps actually in this case. So the shear force will start from here. And we just have to see where it will end up. So in other words, uh, an easy way to do this is to find what is the shear force when x is equal to L. And we can do that quite easily. We just substitute x with L. And this is what we get. So we have 5 over 8 WL minus WL. So that's minus 3 over 8 WL. Okay? So minus 3 over 8 WL is going to be, we can get rid of this, and it's not going to be to scale, but I'll just do my best. So it's going to be, let's say, somewhere here. So if you want to draw this to scale, remember that this distance should be three times uh, this distance, right? Because this one is 1 over 8, this one is 3 over 8. So we will uh, get an idea on how the shear force diagram looks like. So the, for the second half of the beam, the shear force is a straight line which passes through those two points. And let's see if I can get this right. I'll try again. Um, something like this. There we go. So that's it. There will be a point where the shear force is zero uh, here for some x star value. And you can use this as an exercise to find where or for what x does the shear force cancel out. But uh, for now, we're just going to try to find uh, the bending moment, OK? The bending moment for the second half of the beam. So the sum of moments about point uh, P, where P is, in our case here, for example, uh, is 0. And we're going to take uh, counterclockwise as positive. And this is what we have. We've got M. We've got minus RAX. Uh, RA is producing a clockwise moment, by the way. And then uh, the distributed load is producing a counterclockwise moment. And this is what that gives us. We have plus, and then we have W times X minus L over 2. And then this distributed load is acting at the uh, well, the load due to the distributed, uh, the resultant force of the distributed load is acting at the halfway point, right? So it's acting uh, here, and the distance from the acting point to the hinge, to the point P, is going to be x minus L over 2 divided by 2. Let's put this in a bracket. And the whole thing could be equal to 0. Okay, so... Um, you can convince yourself that this is the case by e examining the free body diagram a bit closer. But uh, ultimately, this gives us that the moment is RAX. Now, RA was 1 over 8 WL times X. And then we have minus, because we're moving everything to the other side, we have minus 1 half W, and then we have X minus L over 2 squared. Okay, and you can expand this if you want. Uh, you can expand this bracket, uh, that is. But I'll just leave it like that. And instead, I will just check what happens when x is L over 2 and when x is L. But before I do that, keep in mind that in this case, for the second half of the beam, due to the distributed load, the moment will depend on will be a function of x squared. In other words, what's on the right-hand side is a quadratic equation. So the graph is going to look like a negative parabola, right? Because it has there's a minus here. It means the parabola will have a maximum at some point. So let's find 
what is m calculated at point x equals to l over 2. So that is 1 over 8, w, l multiplied by l over 2. And then we have minus 1 half w times, and then we would have l over 2 minus l over 2, which is, of course, 0. So the result is 1 over 16 w, l squared. So for the second half of the beam, the moment will start from this value, which is exactly the same as this value. So uh, for the bending moment, there are no jumps either. Okay, so the uh, there won't be a smooth transition, um, but there are no jumps at least. And now let's try to find what happens when x equals l. So when x equals l, we have 1 over 8 uh, w l squared minus 1 half. And then we have w times l squared over 4. And as you can see, this is 0, which is what we would have expected in the first place. Because at the ends of the beam, as long as it's not a cantilever beam, which is not the case in this problem, the moment should be uh, identically 0. So this is a parabola, so it's probably going to look something like this, more or less. Okay. And yeah, so for this question, this is how the shear force and the bending moment diagrams look like. And that's the end of the question.